Today on Real Life. Andrea Duma shares her music with us on Real Life Today. Nazareth House of Prayer Director Rania Sayeg is with us to discuss the spiritual atmosphere in Israel. And the Hard Questions panel shares biblical insight to your tough questions. Today on Real Life. This is real life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit, He empowers you, and the Bible is our guide to abundant life. I'm Don Black, and I'm here with our co host today, my co host today, Amy Schaefer. Pastor Amy? How are you? I'm doing well. Good. I'm doing well. I'm getting through the winter. Yes. I see the spring. Thank you, Jesus. It's on the horizon. Oh, it, you know, it's funny because. Uh, Cold is is relevant, right? Like my in Florida, they think 60 is cold, and here when it's like 40 degrees, man, we get out our flip flops and we're like, <laughs> we're ready to go. I know, I know, it is a relevant, it is a relevant thing, but you know, uh, it doesn't really matter where you are. The people go south for the winter, they come north for the summer. Yeah. It, it we get used to it. You can just we're acclimate. Tough. We're we're very tough here in the Northeast. Yeah, that is true. But we're even tougher when it comes to the things of God. Well, I don't know. You know, I know some people in the South that are pretty bulldog I determined. Know, I do too. You know, and they I'm fight. I'm from the South. <laughs> I am too. Well, I'm not from here, but uh, in the South, people can get really kind of uh, full speed too. But you know, you were telling me before we went on the air about television. I was. Let's so, talk about that. So yesterday, I was kind of reminiscing and remembering the season where uh, we we shut off like our cable and our where I got all of our Christian channels mm -hmm. and and you know to save money to see what it would do to our family you know all, all these women were doing I was like, I'm gonna do this too and so we're shutting off cable and for several months and I remember I was like I can't take this anymore I need that Christian television back on immediately because what I found out was that it was how it was feeding me it was it was a message it was a voice from heaven it was like living water so That's to right. speak right. and 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 so really if you're watching us today in christian television don't change that dial by the way because it's going to be a great show but what happens when there's good news going forth something on the inside is like wakening up That's right that's right. It feeds our spirit. Coming alive. That's right. That's right. There's a feeding of the spirit. Yes. God's word goes out through the television, through the preaching, teaching, the yep. encouragement, the yep. testimonies, That's the right. music. All of these are anointed pieces. That's right. And then that touches the spirit. It does. And that's the best place to be. You're yep. watching the best place on television right now for you. Yep. And you didn't tune in because you just happened to do it. God's directed you here to this program right. this, this day for His purposes. Yep. What that means is, Amy, He has something special for, for them, them and for us yes. today. Right. And it's quite possible that a word spoken or something that goes forth can change your life. Yes. Oh, I mean, yes. It's life-changing power in this living, active Word of God. And we try not to just give our own thoughts or opinions, but actually come with scripture and with content. That's why it, it's so worth it to really watch Christian television and get the meat. Well, Norma calls this the Good News, good news. Channel station. And there are other places that God's using it for his purposes. That's, we're not the only one, right. but I'm privileged that we have this opportunity. But it's a great one. It is. Thank Hallelujah. you. We, just, we love our Cornerstone family. We love those who partner with us. We love those who are watching. We love to pray for those that are, that are our partners and that our family that are watching. We, we want them to, to call. If you have any prayer requests at all or any needs, what concerns you concerns us and concerns God, but our prayer partners, they are passionate yes, they are. to pray and they see results. And we, we read testimonies continually here about how God has touched their lives. So, man, it's, it's just a good day to be where we're at and a part of Christian and television. You know, and we're approaching Easter. Yes. And very good. Easter is one of the high seasons in the faith. Yep. 
And I, I just, I'm excited. I've mentioned this a couple times on the program already that the Eastern Passover prophecy chart is yeah. now in our hands. We're so, I'm so tickled. And it, what it is, is it's a tool that I've created that will help you follow through the Jewish Passover feast, which is a, which is a very important prophetic feast, and then how it ties into Jesus' ministry during the Passion Week, which fulfills the Passover. So yeah. that feast has been fulfilled by Jesus. And this is this document, and it's a chart. If you're a partner with us, we're sending it to you. So look in your mail for it. If you're not a partner with us, well, then join us. Become a partner. Call the number on the screen and say, hey, I want to be a partner with Cornerstone. And I want you to have this chart because it takes you into details. Like I, I, I pulled out times that, like when Jesus, what day did Jesus curse the fig tree? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what day did Judas hang himself? I mean, mm -hmm. that's pretty sad, but, but what day did that happen? Mm -hmm. Where, when did e Israel leave Egypt? Mm -hmm. What day did they leave Egypt after the, after the Passover? How long did it take them through the desert to get where, for Pharaoh caught them and they, and they, were, they were, went through the Red Sea? That's all on this chart. Mm -hmm. So it really helps you to get a visual and then some teaching behind it. So I'm going to just give it to you Great. as our partner. We thank you yes. for being part of this ministry. Without your partnership, without your uh, being part of this uh, ministry as a, as a warrior, we couldn't go out and do the things we do. We're seeing God take us all around in different places of the world, <coughs> different places in this country. More people are calling, more ministries happening, right. and it's all because of the faithful partners. So I want to thank you for that. Yeah. This is amazing, very detailed. Yeah, I, really I choked. Cool. I, 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 our art department kind of went a little nuts. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's wonderful, and it will be a blessing to you. We have right now with us Andrea Dumas, and she is here to sing Jesus.
Amen. Hallelujah. Wait a minute. I got to come over here with you. Hallelujah. This is where the Holy Ghost is over here. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What hallelujah. A, what a what a anointed song. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Let's lift him up. Yes. Let's hallelujah. Lift him up. Hallelujah, Lord. God, we give you praise. Thank hallelujah. you, Jesus. You're wonderful you are in mighty, all your ways. Yes, God. Mighty God. We love hallelujah. you, Lord Jesus. Thank yes, you, Holy yes, Spirit. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. God bless you. are coming back. You're going to yes, be back. Yes, I'll be back. Amen. Well, let's go back where I'm supposed to go now. Now I'm supposed to go here. And I want to talk to you about God's word for real life. It's going to be hard to talk around after, 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 that, uh, after that worship time. Isaiah, let's go to Isaiah 55, verse 4 and 5. Isaiah's word says, Indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people. Now listen with me, folks. A leader and commander for the people. Surely you shall call a nation you do not know, and a nation who you do not know will run to you. Because the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Now that's Isaiah's prophesying about the coming of the Messiah. Who he, Jesus, would be a spiritual, a physical, and a political commander of his people. That's what the prophecy is about, all three of those areas. The church of Jesus Christ is that nation that is being described in chapter 50, 55. And in the fullness of time, God will bless Israel with this new nation, and we will become one new man that glorifies God throughout eternity. Hallelujah. That's God's word for real life. We have already seriously enjoyed her music on Real Life, and now we get to dig a bit deeper into her music with Andrea Dumas in this week's Real Life Today. Andrea, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Girl, you didn't <laughs> sing, you sang. <laughs> praise God. Wow, the lifting praise. up the name of Jesus. Yes. Have you always been a singer? Well, you know, I did, um, I grew up singing uh -huh. at home and in the church. My mother played the piano for a church choir, and yeah. so we always had music in the home. Yeah. So my brothers and I, we would sing in the living room with my mother playing the piano. Yeah. So I just always sang, but really I got more serious about what I was doing, mm -hmm. you know, once I went to college and yeah. started singing there. So what happened in college? Did you, is that when you sort of began your walk with God, or was it an early age, or? Yeah. Well, you know. Um, I was impacted by gospel music at a young age. I think I was yeah. about nine years old Aww. when I heard the song God Is, and it really touched me. So it, I always knew that there was a place in me mm -hmm. that was reserved for God, but, you know, I was too young, just, you know, living life and sports and all that kind of thing. Yeah. But once I got to college um, and... You know, people started sharing more about their personal relationship with God and just mm -hmm. being separated and set apart for Him. It really started impacting me, mm -hmm. and I really got serious and really submitted to the Lord. So as part of my story, I really accepted Him truly as my personal Savior while I was in college, which, yeah. is, which is an unlikely thing. That's you know, amazing. but the yeah. Lord was really good and just the ministry that took place there and in the gospel choir at my college. So wow. it was awesome. In the gospel choir. <laughs> yes. You got closer to Christ. I exactly. love that. <laughs> exactly. Because we didn't just sing music. You know, yeah. we would have times after rehearsal. Mm -hmm. People would share their testimonies, oh, prayer requests. Yeah. So it did kind of turn into a time of ministry. And a yeah. lot of people really met God there wow. um, in, you know, in the gospel choir and still serving him today. Wow. you know, as a result of the ministry that went forth in that choir. Well, that's one thing when you sing, it's not just like you're singing technically well, but you're singing with your heart and with passion. Mm -hmm. I mean, even now, you know, I could see you could go right back to that place <laughs> right. any second. I might go with you. I mean, and that's what yeah. a worship, you're a worshiper. Yes. And so you, you put these songs on a... CD. CD. Yes. Oh, girl. Yes, the CD is entitled Celebrate. I'm really excited. It's my first CD. Yes. Um, it was released in the latter part of last year, and God yeah. has just been so amazing. I've just been traveling and singing yes. and sharing the gospel and music, and just so really glad just that He allowed me to be able to do this 
and just kind of the love that I have for him, the love that yeah. I have for his music. So I'm really excited about yeah. it. Yeah, it's like taking that love and going public with it in a big yeah. way. Yeah. So I know that this is your first solo album, mm -hmm. but you have been a backup singer. Can you share some of those stories? Yes, yes. Um, I sang a uh, background for uh, Yolanda Adams. Yeah. I was one of her background singers for, you know, about five, six years, something like that. Mm -hmm. Done some background work with Donnie McClurkin, Pastor Donnie McClurkin. Yes. And also I sing with Richard Smallwood's Vision. So I'm a part yes. of his ensemble, yes. Total Praise, yes. Jesus, You're the Center of My Joy. So I've been singing with him for the last 11 years and that has just been phenomenal. So mm. I was able to really learn about music, learn mm -hmm. about music ministry and just how to minister in mm. song and just yes. singing with those, you know, three, you know, artists, you know, renowned artists, if you will, I really was able to really learn a lot mm -hmm. about how to do public ministry as a music minister. Yeah. Do you have sort of a message that you have woven through your songs that you want your listeners to get into their heart? Well, you know, celebrate is just about celebrating the goodness of the Lord, yeah. praise and worship, you know, sharing the gospel. Mm -hmm. I just want everyone to know that no matter what you're going through, you can you always praise God, you know, right. that the God will come and inhabit your praises uh -huh. and he will encourage you, he will unlift, uplift you, inspire you, mm -hmm. you know, help you to go on. And yes. so the songs that are in that project, it's yes. just a way of just sharing the message of Jesus Christ because mm -hmm. that's what gospel, the gospel music is and it right. should be right. the good news of Jesus Christ. And so that's what my desire has been with this project. And I've just seen, you know, God just really do some amazing things through the project already. Wow. Already. So it, it's easy to worship God when things are going great right. and things are all good and hunky-dory, so mm -hmm. to speak. But can you worship God in tough times? Oh, should we worship God in tough times? <laughs> Definitely. Um, you know, my my mother passed away, you know, some years ago and, and I was, you know, saved and living for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it was a very difficult time for me because yes. I was hurt. Mm -hmm. It was so unexpected, just really grieving. But I knew that if I just hold on to God, that yes. he was going to get me through. Yes. So even through my pain, I would still praise him. One of my favorite scriptures is, I will bless the Lord at all times. Yes. That's good times. Amen. That's bad times that's through trials and tribulations hurt mm -hmm. and his praises shall continually, continually. be in my wow. mouth and so that's kind of how that was like my my scripture and yeah. I would just when I would get down or when I would get you know yeah. feel defeated or mm -hmm. am I gonna really make it yeah. then I would hold on to the Word of God and, yeah. and just praise him through everything and and you know put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, heaviness. I would just you Amen. know Sister. think of the word you know what yes. I mean and just really apply it to my life and apply mm -hmm. it to my feelings and and God he brought me through and and that's what celebrate is about is yeah. just really tapping into where people are and just yes. ministering to Amen. them where they are and mm -hmm. it's just like you know what you can make it you yes. can overcome Amen. if you have God in your life Amen. yes because we have people that are watching that are mm -hmm. going through tough times and they're right. they might be barely hanging on so right. to speak right. but really God has them in the palm of mm -hmm. his hand yes, yes. and he is faithful and the Lord is good to all yes he is he is he slow is. to anger and of great mercy yes. he's just a good yes, God he is. so what is the future of your music what do you see for, can people contact you can and they have you in to sing yes. or sing like you do. <laughs> yes, um, yeah, I have a website, uh -huh. uh, andreadumas.com. Um, of course, I'm on social media at Andrea Dumas Music, so they can contact me there. Email address, andreadumasmusic at gmail.com. Yes. You know, just a variety of ways. Just reach out to me, um, and I would love to come and share in music ministry in yeah. any capacity. And it doesn't just have to be a certain type of event. I'll uh -huh. come anywhere and do anything because it's not about me. It's about yeah. uplifting Jesus. Amen. It's about taking his gospel out there. Yes. And so however people, news. yeah, the good yeah. news. And sometimes people tap, you know, they would prefer... Uh, having a singer come, yes. they're not as intimidated, but it's like the music and the yes. ministry, God yes. can still minister right. through that. And so, but yeah. That, I'm, that music and that worship breaks down walls in people's does. hearts. Music is a universal language. It is. And everybody can. <laughs> exactly. 
exactly, right? And exactly. worship God. We mm -hmm. all know that. Thank you so much for Thank coming. I'm excited so about you, and, and we're going to hear from you again yes. on this show, so don't change that dial. <laughs> and thank you for your heart and the passion behind the worship that you, you sing. We God appreciate you. We will be <laughs> right back. Later on Real Life, the panel gathers to take on the tough issues by digging into the Word and answering your hard questions. Pastor John Nuso concludes his teaching series on being crowned with dignity and worth on The Word for Today. And coming up next, Rania Sayed, founder and director of HOPE, a Christian ministry and training center in Nazareth, discusses preparing prayer warriors and intercessors in Israel. That's next on Real Life. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. For Women of Valor 2015, we are searching for a woman who embodies Proverbs 31.10, a woman of strength, honor, and godly virtue. Do you have a special woman in your life that you would like to nominate? Go to ctvn.org slash valor before April 17th to submit nominations. All nominees will be invited to be part of our Woman of Valor show. Tune into Real Life to learn more. Being a mom is the hardest job I've ever loved, and I'm just so grateful to be able to journey with my friends here at Mom Talk. From silly moments and fun, to heart-to-heart -heart talks, from encouragement and wisdom, to practical daily advice, we're all here for you. We yes. put the real in real life. That's right. So join us and our families every Monday. We'll see you then. Bye. 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 Cornerstone Cares is God's love in action. We focus on meeting tangible needs like food, education, health care, and housing for people all over the world, as well as sharing the good news of Jesus. From disaster relief efforts here in the United States to community support in Zimbabwe and Mongolia, from street ministry here in Pittsburgh to the education of Peruvian and South African children, your support of Cornerstone Cares goes a long way. I'm so excited that with us today is our friend Rane Sig Sigeg. I didn't say it right, Rane. Sigeg. Sigeg. I'm going to tell you, this lady is a woman of, mighty woman of God. Right. She's the director and founder of Hope House of Prayer and Exploits. I always, mm. I always like that exploits part. Mm -hmm. In Nazareth, Israel. So her home is in Nazareth, where they raise up and equip prayer warriors. She's here to talk to us about the spiritual climate in Israel. Rania, thank you so yeah. much for coming back. It's a long journey, yes. thank you. but we're glad that you're here. Such an honor. Now, the last time we were together, we were talking about the, there was rocket fire. The last time we did a Skype together, and that's kind of, that's all changed. It's not directly uh, rockets aren't firing now. But what's it like in Nazareth now? Yeah, after the war with Gaza, really things are becoming calm. You know, praise the Lord, and there's been a kind of a ceasefire that uh, we still don't know when, how long it's going to be, you know, because um, many are also are a little bit cautious right now. Of many of the things that are happening of uh, threats coming of a possible uh, infiltration of ISIS from the northern border of Israel. Mm. And this is something that we have been praying for and watching over because mm. our uh, position in Nazareth, we're in the northern part of Israel. Mm -hmm. So I've been praying and uh, watching over the, war the, the northern borders uh, because we have seen several visions and dreams of uh, kind of, uh, I would say the Lord has been uh, giving us a, a head up saying, okay, you have to watch right now uh, because it's like they're coming a little bit closer towards the border of Israel. But mm -hmm. we're trusting the Lord for his safety. And yes. Um, yes. not only that, but I believe that the Lord has, is raising up now the generation to stand on the walls to push back this darkness. Mm. 
Yes. And that was actually a vision that I saw, like um, a kind of a flood that is trying to infiltrate our land, mm. but the intercessors and the prophetic voice yes. was pushing this away. Amen. Because as the Bible says, you know, when the enemy is trying to uh, raise up, uh, you know, his, his, mm -hmm. his uh, schemes and, mm -hmm. and, and his evil schemes, and he tries to come like a flood, yes. the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Amen. That's exactly right. And prayer and intercessory warfare yep. and dealing in the spiritual side mm -hmm. is, real, is our best offense and our best defense. Exactly now, do you, yeah. do you, in your team, t maybe people don't remember, give us a brief introduction of what, what your ministry is about there in Nazareth. Yeah. yeah our ministry was actually founded in 2004. Uh, the, our main vision is really seeing an army of intercessors. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, in the land of Israel, we're basically uh, the only now, I would say by now, but our hearts is really that the Lord will begin more houses of prayer among the Arab community in the land of Israel. But for now, we're the only ones. Uh, and uh, we're actually the only house of prayer that is operated and run by local people, yes. founded by local people. Mm -hmm. And we're crying out to the Lord for this army to be raised up among young generation right now because that by, I believe that this is the generation yes. of the Lord's return. Yes. And okay. I've been praying that the Lord would equip this generation wow. and uh, pour out the spirit and the power of Elijah to Amen. prepare the way of the Lord. Amen. And so we, be, we, we began the house of prayer and the Lord, uh, uh, you know, began to attract and bring young people into the house of prayer. And this is when we began to see a movement yes. happening. Right among the young generation. Yeah. They began to hunger more to the Lord, but they're not really hungry for another, another religious meeting. They're hungry for an encounter with Jesus. Mm -hmm. right. And that's been really my cry. I like that in your name because, Amy, the, the name is, to do, and the end of the name is, and to do exploits. exploits. Yes. Yeah. And that's a, I think that's a bold statement. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. kind of like here on Cornerstone, we do a program called Signs and Wonders. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we, we ask God to demonstrate and manifest His presence in our, in our ministry to heal the sick and to deliver those that are under bondage and to break the, yes. the power of the enemy. And that's the mm -hmm. exploits that you're talking about. Yes, the Lord. What signs and wonders and exploits have you seen through praying? Yeah, one of the amazing, I would say, breakthroughs that we have seen mm -hmm. uh, in 2010 and after 2010, it was a pivotal year for us. In fact, it was a prophecy that has been released through the body of Christ that 2010 mm -hmm. would be a pivotal yes. shift year for all of us as a body of Christ. Yes. And what happened in this year, there were two major events. Mm -hmm. I would call them as exploits, mm -hmm. with, which actually have uh, opened for us a door mm -hmm. in the spiritual realm. Where it's like the Lord has opened up the heavens over Nazareth. Mm -hmm. And since that time, we began to see miracles, signs, and wonders. Mm -hmm. Now, the things that we have experienced were uh, of, 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 well, we had a meeting with around 30 young people mm -hmm. and then for the first time in the history of Nazareth we have seen creative miracles happening in our midst. Amen. And since Amen. that time, I'm talking about legs growing, hands growing, tumors disappearing. Wow. So the Lord wow. began to do these miracles which we longed for. We prayed wow. for these uh, things for more than 19 years wow. on the walls of the city of Nazareth. And I, I said, Lord, uh, we want to see a breakthrough that you would open up the womb of the city because once the Lord opened up the womb of the city of Nazareth, mm -hmm. the power of God will be released all over yes. the land of Israel Amen. because uh, Nazareth is operating like a womb yes. for the nation of Israel, I believe, yes. and for the healing of the nations. Yes. So we began to see these things happening and since that time people began to come to the house of prayer and we're experiencing His presence and the Lord's releasing healings whether it's physical, whether it's inner healing, you know, mm -hmm. deliverance, demonic oppressions are breaking off of young people mm -hmm. uh, in yes. our community. Yes. And we have been longing to see the Lord manifest himself in this uh, uh, level of exploits. Amen, amen. Well, we're going into, a, I think, a very significant season as we go into the Passover, mm -hmm. then through the Pentecost, all through the season, all through the feast this year, and then culminating with tabernacles mm -hmm. with the full blood moon in tabernacle. I, I, I sense in my spirit a pr in the prophetic that this is a, a, a sea change. There's mm -hmm. gonna be a change that happens this year. Yes. I don't know what that really means, but you said a minute ago that you believe that this generation will see the Lord's coming. Talk to us more about that. 
Yeah, in fact, actually, just touching a little bit about that point, I believe that Passover actually is a very key timing for us mm -hmm. in the Lord's timetable prophetically. As you said, for a reason that the Lord spoke to us as we were waiting upon the Lord for 21 days of prayer and fasting, mm -hmm. the Lord released a prophetic word mm -hmm. that from April, we are going to see that the Lord is, is, is going to release an end time yes. uh, uh, prophetic voices uh -huh. among the Arab women. Yes. There will be an army of Arab women rising mm. as yeah. deliverers yeah. because the Lord said this year is going to be a year where we are going to move in a higher dimension of authority. Amen. It's the Moseses in the nations right. that's going to rise up as deliverers and part the sea to see deliverance mm -hmm. for God's people and enter into the promises mm -hmm. that we're longing for. Mm -hmm. yes. So I believe Passover would be a, point, a pivotal point for us to behold the deliverance of the Lord. Amen. And not only that, but I believe there will be a cry coming out from the heart of God's people and deliverers in the nations. Wow. And that's why Amen. the travail, yes. the birth thing, Yes. The cry in the hearts of the deliverers yeah. will be released yes. so that the Lord would say, I have heard the cry of my people. Amen. It's like, as he said to Moses, yes. I have heard them and I'm coming to deliver my people. And he is. Amen. He yes. is. He's coming to back to set up his kingdom on this earth and that we will see him reigning here. Yes. from Jerusalem as right. King of Kings yes. and Lord of Lords. Mm. And I, I'm with you. I wow. think this is the, the birthing season for yes. that second coming of the Lord. And I believe that he's rising up in his church mm. through the women of God, through the men of God. I believe there's a move in the men of God yes. that men are starting yes. to shake off yes. that, yes. that mm -hmm. lethargicness mm -hmm. and start moving out in wow. Courage and in faith, and and we'll see together. We'll link arms together and see the exploits of the Lord, because wow. that's what the world wants to see, Amy. Yes. That we don't need any more religious words. Right. Yes. We need to see the hand of God, yes. the encounter of God. And if you want an encounter with God, mm. right now, call us on 888-665-4483 yes. and say, I want to touch the Lord. I want the Lord to touch me. Yes. You know, we can ask mm. Him to make himself manifest himself yes. in our presence. Don't yeah. allow the enemy to keep you in that mode of where it has been. Break out today. Amen. Make the phone call yes. and let's stand together. We're going to pray at the end of the program. So put some prayer requests in. You'll stay and we'll pray at the end of the program. Yes. Thank you so much for coming Thank and sharing you. with Thank us. Thank you for having It's not me. every day you get to hold hands with somebody born and raised in Nazareth. That's what exactly. an honor to have you here, Thank Ronnie. You, it's Thank an you. honor being with you. Thank you so much. It's uh, time for today's Bible study. And this week, we have been blessed by having Pastor John Nuzo, who's a good friend and mentor of my husband and I's, from Victory Family Church in Cranberry Township, PA, as he has shared his teaching called Crowned with Dignity and Worth. And now he concludes his teaching on the word for today. We're continuing on the subject of your, your value and your worth before God. We've been talking about how in Psalms 8 that God crowned man with glory and honor and dignity and worth, that he made man the crown of his creation. And, and he also said in that context that I made you to have dominion over all the works of my hands. We saw how Adam and Eve lost that covering, how they sinned and that covering left them. They found themselves naked and ashamed and they, they did what, what all mankind has done ever since outside of falling in love with Jesus and, and receiving the, the mercy and the grace that comes by making him the Lord of your life. They made a, a, a decision to cover themselves. They hid themselves from the presence of God. They judged God. God didn't run from them. They ran from God. God came looking for them. Can I tell you today that he's looking for you? His judgment against you is not that God's trying to find fault with you. He's trying to bring a judgment to you, and here's God's judgment, that he swallowed up your sin in Jesus. And that when you give your life to Christ, you make the great exchange. But something happened to Adam that's happened to every one of us in our life. The scripture tells us in Romans that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that's exactly what happened with Adam and Eve. They were crowned with the glory of God. When sin came, that glory departed. They fell short of that glory. 
and they tried to recreate that glory by covering themselves. But Jesus did something incredible when he came and he redeemed us. He restored back to us what Adam and Eve forfeited. He brought back that potential, not just potential, but that privilege of walking with God in the cool of the day and, and communing with God and talking with God, having a relationship with your heavenly Father. Jesus brought that back to us. And yet so many believers, so many Christians strive to try to make themselves right with God. So they spend so much of their effort doing things that are good things to do, of which are absolutely appropriate to do. Pray, read your Bible, go to church, serve people, love people. All of those things are wonderful and good, but none of those things cover you. It's when you do those things to cover yourself that your good works, according to the scriptures in Hebrew, talk about repenting or turning from dead works so that you might serve the living God. Do you know that you can be doing the right thing, but doing it for the motive to make yourself right with God? And what occurs is that what you were doing good actually turns into a dead work. It, 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 it's not that it wasn't valuable to somebody, but anytime your motive is to try to make yourself right with God, that you are turning something good into something dead. That's why religion is so offensive. It's what caused people to get into the cockpit of an airplane and fly into the Twin Towers. The lie of religion that if I can do this, I can be right with God, their God. Now, of course, that's a horrific deception. But it was still based on that simple premise that I'm going to cover myself. And so you may not be to that extreme, or I pray you're not, to the extreme of, of killing somebody thinking you're doing a service for God. But they did it to cover themselves. And people are doing it all the time. Listen to what the scripture says about Jesus in John 17, verse 19. Jesus said, I, I, he said, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. So we could say very clearly, he's praying for you and me. And that they may all be one as father, you are in me and I in you. That they, almost, uh, that they also may be one in us and that the world may believe that you sent me. Now listen, and the glory. Now that word glory means this. And the glory, the magnificence, the excellence, the preeminence, dignity, worth, and grace that you gave me. Now listen, I now give them, that they may be one just as we are one. I in them and you and me, that they may be, be perfect in, in one, that the world may know that you sent me. Now listen to this. And that the world might know that you love them just like you love me. I'm persuaded of this fact. Not only doesn't the world know that God loves you just like he loved Jesus. Christians don't believe that. Jesus said the glory that God crowned man with, that Adam lost, that man forever has tried to cover himself and to gain and to regain himself apart from God. Jesus said, Father, the glory that you gave me, the glory that Adam lost, I now give back to them. I now again cover them and, and, and crown them with glory and honor and dignity and worth. So much so, that when people see how they fellowship with, with, with us, that people see how they walk with their God, they will know that you love them just like you love me. So it's my hope that you understand that the God that died on a cross for you, the, the Son of the living God, did so because he loves you, because he cares for you, and because he endeavored to create a place of value and worth in you that will cause you to live your life as the head and not the tail, and above only and not beneath. I'm Ambria. And, and we're, we're today's, today's girls. Hey. Who is that? Are you okay? Stupid people. <laughs> the party's over, girls. What about you, huh? Watch us on Real Life. On Wednesdays. You don't want to miss an episode. On average, Cornerstone receives over 300 phone calls a day, 24-7. But have you ever wondered what happens to your prayer request after you hang up the phone? On Real Life, we pray for every call, whether it's mentioned on air or not, and we even pray for them during our weekly chapel. Then we lay hands on your request and anoint it with oil, believing for your miracle. 
As Jesus tells us in Matthew 18, 20, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them. If you need prayer at any time, call us. We would love to pray with you. A highly prophetic Passover is only a few weeks away, and we want to help you prepare for what God will do and the important events He is signaling. When you give in the month of March, you will receive our Easter and Passover prophecy chart. This brief, easy to read resource will help you discover the origins of Passover, understand the Jewish and Christian significance of this holiday, and join thousands of fellow believers in prayer with a special Passion Week prayer guide. Passover commemorates God's deliverance of Israel from slavery in Egypt, sparing their firstborn through the blood of a lamb sprinkled on their doorposts. It also foreshadows the work of Christ on the cross, the ultimate Passover lamb. Not a regular partner with us? Call us today to join the Cornerstone Network family. Let's discover the blessings of Passover and Passion Week together. It's once again time for us to call our panel together and take on some tough questions and some of your hard issues that you've sent to us. On the panel today, my co-host, Amy Schaefer, she co-pastors Grace Life Church in Monroeville, Pennsylvania. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No. And Dr. <laughs> William Glaze, I'll be a little bit more, a little bit more strong. Because we got got to go up a little bit here. Yes. Is a senior pastor at Bethany Baptist Church in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yes, it's, it's always a pleasure to be here. Oh, we look forward to you being part of this panel. And Ranye Sayeg. Sayeg. Did I get it? Sayeg. That's, right. That's good. The director and founder of Hope, which stands for I didn't get it, but Hope out of Nazareth, yes. Israel. Israel. We're so glad you're here. Thank you. We have an international panel today. Yes. And then then uh, our our buddy and resident counselor, uh, Chuck Hamby, who is our, our uh, head of our prayer ministry and also our, our chaplain here at Cornerstone. So we are excited to get started. Let's, yes. let's, go, let's go with this question, guys. Our hard question today is about the Trinity. Do you believe in the Trinity? And I'm gonna start with the doctor. Do you believe in the Trinity? Uh, yeah, I believe in the Trinity. You know, when you look at the scripture, the word Trinity is not in the Bible. So if you were to tell somebody, well, you know, you can go to this passage or that passage and find the word Trinity, you're not going to find it. Right. However, over and over again, we see concepts of the Trinity. Mm -hmm. uh, when Jesus got baptized, mm -hmm. the son went down into the water, the spirit descended like a dove, and the father said, this is my beloved son, who am I well pleased? And so we see other instances throughout the scripture where it is uh, solid proof that there's a trinity. That there's yes. a trinity. Right. Chuck, what do you say? Uh, I think I absolutely believe in the trinity. Uh, one guy said, I'm so trinitarian, I anoint with three in one oil. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, when, when Jesus prayed in the, with his disciples, the great high priestly prayer, it would have been an exercise of him talking to himself, essentially. And, and he got alone uh, often to be with the Father. So, and, and it's simply the, the rule of relationship. God is a relational God. He, he, wants, he wants contact with us. And he, he didn't make us because he needed that, because he had that in the Trinity. Right. Had relationship. Yes. Rania, what, what, what do you say? Definitely, I believe in the Trinity, and I uh, believe that um, I just love how the Father expressed himself, of the union of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's not the unity right. of the three of them, but it's the union of one God yes. that expresses himself in three different ways to us, where he comes as the Son of God, and he dwells in us in the Spirit, but we have this relationship with the Father through him. So definitely we, we, we believe in the Trinity, but as you know, we're also very challenged in the Middle East when it comes to this question. It is very challenging. In fact, I don't know of any other religion in the world, and I don't consider Christianity a religion. Mm -hmm. I don't think of us as a religion, but I, any other faith-based 
a practice that has a trinity? Are, is there anything that you know of? Not that I know of. And, you know, Christianity is uh, very unique in that sense mm -hmm. because uh, most of the other religions, they might have a, 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 a personal, impersonal force mm -hmm. or they might have a, uh, a, a person that they call God, but the concept of the Trinity is not known. Yeah. Amy. I immediately thought about when Jesus himself was talking to his disciples and he said, I'm going to go to my father, mm -hmm. but I'm going to also leave, not leave you comfortless, but I'm Amen. going to give you the Holy Spirit. So mm -hmm. he's... Jesus himself is talking about going to the Father, but yet sending the Holy Spirit down to his people. So that is three in one. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Well, it is a mystery. Mm -hmm. It is a mystery. We can't understand it in our natural terms because it doesn't compute that there can be three separate, but one together. Yes. Our mind doesn't allow us to fully understand that. And I don't think we're supposed to fully understand that. No. That's part of faith. That's, right. That's part of, but well, you know, one thing I think about if, uh, I, w I would be afraid to have a God that I could understand. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? I, hear you, I mean, bro. because uh, then that would make me somebody that I shouldn't be. So mm -hmm. right. I, I, I praise God that there are things about God that I don't Mysteries. understand, a mystery, yeah, and it says, who can know the mind of God, you know, right. or who has been his counselor. Mm -hmm. So, you know, praise right. God. The, the word says that we are created in his image. Mm -hmm. I'm a trichotomist. Well, now don't, use that word. don't use that word. <laughs> you're, 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 you're making my mind confused. <laughs> Break Body, it soul, and spirit. spirit. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the Godhead, you have Christ, the physical manifestation okay. of the triune God. Mm -hmm. You have the Holy Spirit, which is that part that comes into us and makes us spiritually alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and then you have the soul, and, and, and we talk of soul music, we talk of soul food, that creative, expressive part of us. It was the Father who had the plan. Mm -hmm. It was the Son who executed the plan. It's the Holy Spirit that applies the plan. So, you know, it... Everything that I know about God just screams that, uh, that Trinitarian. So we're made in the image of God, what you're saying, Chuck, because we're three parts in one, too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're in the image of yeah, God. Yeah, there's not three of me. No, there are not. Praise Don't God. Don't think we can make it if we have three. <laughs> is this something they talk a lot about in Israel? No. Well, actually, I would say that this is a challenging point usually when it comes to evangelism to the Muslims, mm -hmm. of course, and that's something they always challenged mm -hmm. when we speak about Jesus and the first thing a Muslim would say to us, well, we cannot really believe in a God that is a three. Mm -hmm. They don't understand that we're talking about a union. Yeah. We're not mm -hmm. talking about a unity right. of three gods. Mm -hmm. right. So, and they, because mm -hmm. they believe only in a one God. Mm -hmm. right. And when it comes to the Trinity, it's a big controversial point uh -huh. to the Muslim people. Mm -hmm. Unless the Lord comes to them with the spirit of wisdom and revelation, reveal Jesus to them. That's, right. That's the only way they can understand it. Right, wow. You know, I heard somebody uh, put it like this. Ooh. When you talk about the Trinity, it's one what and three who's. Mm -hmm. One God, one what, and three mm -hmm. who's. Mm -hmm. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's good. Right. I've not heard that. That's good. Mm -hmm. One what and three who's. Three who's. Right. Well, it... it for you at home, as you're watching this, this program, you may have questioned, what is the Trinity? How does God split himself up? And how is, how is he divided? Is, do, the, do the Godhead fight with each other? Is God, who's, who's in charge? You know, Because those are all natural issues. And brother and sister, those aren't really issues we need to worry about. Those are things that we trust God. Mm. He loves us. He's built us just like mm. him. Uh, Pastor Chuck is exactly right, that we are triune, we're made in three images, just like our, our Father is triune, we're made in His, His image. And so I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for the Trinity, Amen. I'm thankful yes. that God's got it all together, Amen. He has it figured out and He's working out His plan, and just like you said, Chuck, the Holy Spirit's working out that plan. Amen. Yes. Well, thank you guys for answering that hard question. About, about the Trinity. Mm -hmm. We're going to be back in just a minute to pray for your prayer requests that you've called in. Still got time to call if you, if you haven't. But first, let's see what's on tomorrow's Real Life. Friday on Real Life. It's our special weekly Signs and Wonders program. 
with Pastor Gary Mitrick, bringing a special message of hope from God's Word. The team prays for God to provide the miracle that you've been waiting for. And Pastor Myra Bell takes us into the presence of the Lord with anointed praise and worship. That's Friday on Real Life. We're back here to pray and, and to believe God, put our faith together, and to believe God for his touch on your life. Because we know that it's not a religion because it's a relationship. Mm -hmm. And our Heavenly Father cares for us. And I, I've got a praise report. Yay. Love our praise reports. Mary Lynn, who uh, has a cancer, has been declared cancer-free. Her numbers have gone way down. And God is touching her body. Praise the Lord for that. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor, give us a prayer request. Uh, Doris is uh, calling in need of a job. Mm -hmm. So we definitely want to remember her in prayer. Uh, May is experiencing stress and loneliness. Mm -hmm. And Charles wants peace of mind and good health. Amen. So Amen. God can definitely answer well, those so, prayers and nothing is impossible. Speak to May for a second, Amy. What about the loneliness and the peace? Yes, M May, Jesus, like we just said, sent the Holy Spirit to comfort you and to help you and he'll keep you and he'll hold you and he'll give you peace Amen. and comfort right. and he'll sustain you. He is our great helper and it is to him that we lean on in those times of loneliness. Hallelujah. He will Hallelujah. bring comfort. He great is our comfort. comforter. If you're, if you're lonely and you're afraid, yes. look to Jesus. He's our healer. Amen. A prayer request, sister. Yes, uh, we have here Pearl that actually is grieving. Uh, uh, Tracy and her niece mm -hmm. uh, and children are mourning the death of the husband who oh, died Lord. in a tragic oh, car accident. So oh, really Jesus. hard Jesus. prayer request, but the Lord yes. is alive. And Jesus, I believe he has sent us the Holy Spirit to comfort, Amen. to yes. comfort you right now. So we pray and we decree that over Thank you. Jesus. We decree the uh, peace of Jesus of yes. Nazareth over yes, you God. right now and over your family. Yes, God. And we ask you right now, Lord, that you would touch deeply her heart. Yes. And in the midst of this tragic yes. situation, we know that you will reveal yourself as yes, a God. great comforter, yes, Lord. Lord. Lord, de yes, we decree Lord. right now over her peace into yes, her God. spirit, into her Jesus. mind, into her soul. Amen. Hallelujah. Restore her, Lord. Yes, Bring restoration God. to her soul in the yes, name of Jesus, her, Father, Lord. and comfort this Amen. grief. Yes. Father, lift Jesus. up the grief from deep inside in the name of yes, Jesus. Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Life can get really difficult, but you know what? You're never alone. Let's put mm -hmm. a prayer right. request in yes. here. And the greater one lives in us. John says, mm -hmm. a greater is he who's in you mm -hmm. than he who's in this world. So mm -hmm. be of good cheer. Mm -hmm. God is in control. Let's just pray general prayer, guys, oh, if you put your hands here. Yeah. Stretch your hands towards the television oh, yeah. if you're part of our prayer team. Lord, we pray for every one of these Lord, prayer requests. Yes. The heart of each of these people, Lord, is in your hand. Yes. And God, we thank yes. you that you love yes. them. Yes. You care for them. Yes. Lord, you're faithful to them in Jesus' yes. name. Hallelujah. Yes. And we release them to your care yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. amen and amen. Hallelujah. Yes. So glad that you're with us all the way from Nazareth. Thank you for being in. So glad all of you guys are with us. We are closing today, and I can't, I, you know, I'm ready to, I'm ready. We're going to go over there and sing with her as Andrea Dumas sings, Speak It. Come on, come on. God called you to speak everything that you're wanting to see. As the prayers are yours. 